Welcome back, my name is Hafid and this is the second video of this branching system particle simulation unboxing and by looking at the image we can see that this is what we can accomplish with this project example and check this out now I have actually like sliders to open up the box so that's pretty cool I don't have to do any cutting or anything let me open this all the way open up the flaps and let's see what we have in this project example and as always when you decompress a file you have a document you telling you name of the project the compatibility and just the insidium tag because i'm subscribed to all of these three softwares i have the latest cinema 4d x particles and cycles 4d cycles 4d is not required but it is good to have and it's basically what they're asking you if you want to accomplish this exactly but again you don't really need it but i have it so i'll give it a try the next thing just like you saw in the box they give you a render example so this is what you're supposed to get if you just open up the project and press render using cycles 4d of course so before i start to dig into the project i'm just going to do a quick render check and see if this is actually what we can accomplish so let me take this out and just move it out of the way and the last thing that we have is just a project example so let me go into the camera view that they are providing hide everything else and here on the left we have our animation on the viewport i'll pause it right there and activate the real-time preview on cycles 4d and as you can see i am on frame 119 i have about 10 samples and it's looking pretty good i haven't moved anything and because i already have the lighting and environment included as well as the materials this thing is ready to go if you just want to start going moving the colors you know you're just playing around but i haven't moved anything and i did this render check and it is coming out as as advertised you know i can't really play it in real time because it's going to crash but let me go into frame 70 and then you start it again everything is working fine i mean we don't have you know like smoke or water simulation we just have this branching system but the materials look good the lighting looks good so i'm ready to start digging into this here you can see the simulation from a different perspective and as you can see it's just expanding on this plane and it's branching off and it is kind of losing its its structure i don't even know if this has a structure maybe it depends on the emitter and the center everything is coming out from there yep kind of like a star i don't even know what shape this is following but the object tag we have have three emitters we have uh xp trail generators for each emitter and a couple of modifiers we have an xp spawn another xp spawn i've never seen this xp limit to y axis nor this xp avoid intersection detection freeze mode what is this i assume this is what is detecting you know those trails whenever they collide with each other it's just going to freeze the emission and i think this is the secret sauce to this project file but let's start with the emitters i have this xp emitter driver it's a circle shape emitter on the c plus plane it is emitting a shot emission so basically just from this shape from the spline circle is going to shoot those particles out probably those modifiers are going to make that stick to the to the surface but i think that's the core of everything so let me look into the other emitters we have emitter spawn left side and right side and these emitters actually have a different icon which i believe that these are made with either a modifier or a generator so i'm actually going to skip those for now actually there's not much in the scene so i'm just going to take a look at them so i'll activate the spawn on the left side side and under the modifiers i'm also going to activate the spawn on the left side modifier and if we take a look at that one i think that how this is working is it's using the green circles are the original xp emitter driver and this xp spawn is basically making those particles like their own emitter so basically we have the circle emitter and then we're shooting up particles but in a way transforming each of those particles to become their own emitter using this xp spawn and as you can see particles are being emitted and then those particles are becoming emitters and yeah we have this trail of blue particles just coming out of each i'll activate the right side as well as its emitter now those emission particles from the beginning and they have two emitters the left side and the right side it's looking pretty cool we got the star looking shape i don't know it's it's really cool i'm going to activate the xp trails which is just going to create lines on those emitters just so we can see just a bit better the direction of what everything is going to there we go and it's looking more like a flower like a lotus flower but also more like an explosion actually this looks like an agave uh, cactus an agave plant but as you can see everything is coming from this point and then exploding upwards it's you know branching out we are not using the xp branching system but the 
these XP spawns are what are creating those, you know, those lines based off on this stem, I believe. So the original emitter is just going up and that is kind of like the stem. And then we have the XP spawn left and right, just, you know, spawning particles throughout the stem. So that's what's giving us this like leaf shape. I know this is not what we're going for, but you can probably use this. Like I said, this looks like an agave cactus, agave plant, or I don't know. You can definitely use this technique. But in order to keep those particles, you know, spawning and sticking to the surface, I think that's what we need this XP limit to Y axis. So I'm going to activate it. And I believe that that is, yeah, that is just going to stick all of our particles, you know, just staying on the floor. Basically the same thing that we had, they're exploding, but they are, you know, just staying on one plane. You're, they're just staying 2D. And they are very straight. There's no really like variation or anything. So I believe that this is what the XP turbulence is for, just to add some, just a little bit of motion. The strength on that turbulence is around three and their scale is 100%. But as you can see, it is giving us a little bit of motion and also giving us some curves. So this is looking a bit better, just a little bit more natural, you know, and it's cool. It still looks like a tree, but that is not what we're going for. So the last thing I'm going to activate is just the XP avoid intersection detection freeze mode. Is that really the name of that thing? Oh no, the name is just XP avoid. I think they just rename it for the project, but I'm going to activate it and we're supposed to have our, you know, original animation simulation back. And yeah, we have it. As you can see, these lines are going off, but I feel like once they're detecting that they're about to collide, they just freeze. I mean, some of them still keep going, but once they detect that they're about to collide with their own lines, I guess, their own emitters, that's when they freeze. And yeah, here you can change the detection distance. So let me make this, I don't know, 23. I'll just crank everything randomly to see what it does. The fall thickness. And it's interesting to see that they're using the XP trails to do the detection instead of the emitters themselves. I don't know why that's the reason but as you can see i increased the detection distance and if you see the ones over here they're not really going all the way and they are stopping but the other ones over here are still staying pretty tight to each other so i don't really know what's going on maybe because of the variation so let me crank that to zero play it again i don't get it it is working kind of working over here but the ones on the top they are still pretty close to each other so maybe i'm not changing the right parameter but you know i'm gonna just put it all the way to 100 i have everything activated and it doesn't seem to be working it only works for the ones here at the bottom and by increasing the detection distance i was just looking to get a little bit more of this like leafy natural look i don't know if i'm explaining myself but i just think that these ones are just a little bit too close to each other i wish that i could change it but i'm gonna play around with it and as you can see nothing too complicated too fancy is happening i think this project is very easy to use and because we are using particles pretty much everything is parametric it's procedural so i can just change for example I increase the turbulence and now I'm getting like a completely different thing. You can get a completely different look just by playing around with the parameter, just playing around with the emitters, the turbulence. If you go too crazy, as you can see, you are going to have to do some fine tuning just to make sure that, you know, everything is looking pretty good. I don't like how the sensor looks like too spiky, like some of these, I don't know, they just look weird to me, but this already comes lit up. It comes with the materials. It comes with the environment. I'm really liking the gradients of this lines you can obviously add any material that you want but if you want to change the color of this material the one that is included just go ahead and open up that and the way that i change it i just moved over here to the thin film note and by playing with these lambda red lambda green lambda blue let's say 800 on the grid 200 on the green 800 on the blue it's red and blue dominant with a little bit of green so we are getting this pink ish color i couldn't really find like a eyedropper or like a color picker section i don't know some of these materials are just you know really complicated i don't really understand it but if you know exactly how this is working then you know how to properly change the color but that is one way that you can just go ahead and quickly zap the color just to have something different of what they came with and lastly if you're looking to render this with octane render just simply add these octane tags to the xp trail if you just go to tags you know for the octane tags just add the object tag into the xp trail and once you have those selected go into the hair 
tab is going to appear just check render as hair here you can change the thickness of the root and the tip and just directly drop a material onto the xp trails octane crashed of course okay here we go as you can see i have a similar material of what we had in cycles and it's actually this welding material this metal material that i bought from the pixel lab this is the texture pack number three and as you can see we have this metal a pretty similar gradient of what this project example came with and i'm actually going to do a review of these materials as you can see i have all of them i also have like their lighting essentials for octane really easy to use i mean and just like any other material just drag and drop it into whatever you want to change and these are kind of my secret sauce i mean i don't necessarily use the material as it comes i use it more as a base and then you know i play around with the colors i play around with the textures i add my own you know roughness materials roughness maps but these are a huge help if you you simply don't want to make a material from scratch in this case i feel like a metallic one with this kind of like gradient from the index of refraction i think that's what it's called but i think that's what's making this gradient this thing change color you can obviously go and select the material and then go to the node editor and i think you just got to find the material that has the color and let's say let's change this to green never mind it's not working i think you actually have to go to the material itself and like i said you go to the index channel and this is something i'm still learning this is how you change the color of those metallic gradient materials i don't really know how this is working the metallic ior but let's say let me change this just a little bit so we can get some variation i don't know something like this a little bit more similar to what the project came with but yeah i mean i don't know a lot about these node materials like i wouldn't be able to make this from scratch myself i can definitely learn but i just rather you know use something that is available for me i use this i learn this as i go i cannot say that i have used every single one of them so maybe you don't need as many Many, but they're just nice to have just in case and i really think that it depends what you are doing so if you're pretty much a freelancer a 3d generalist just like me you're gonna want to start building your material libraries your lighting libraries your model libraries because we pretty much have to do everything ourselves so just let me know down in the comments if you need any more resources you know if you are this like 3d generalist if you just have you know basically this need of creating just a bunch of different things you just need a little bit help you know just having these resources are going to save you a lot of time and honestly a lot of stress you know and a lot of you know losing that motivation once you have all this available i think it's going to be pretty easy for you to start making more stuff so just shoot me a message let me know in the comments also reach out to me on social media if you want to see what i come up with just follow me that is hafid that particles and that is the account that i have dedicated to upload all of the animations that come from this analysis of just motion graphics vfx with x particles but as you can see everything was working pretty well it is a branching system not really it was just using the modifiers it was using the xp spawn left to right to just create those branches i expected to use this xp branch just like the previous video so make sure to go and check that out to see how that is working and then compare it to this one and for the next video i'm actually going to take a look at this branch curl i'm really excited for this one as you can see we i think we have some subsurface into this branches the end of it is actually curling and then we can see that the leaves also have a sort of you know curl motion so i'm really excited for this one stay tuned for the next video i think this one is also going to be pretty cool but my name is hafid and i'll see you on the next video